Hey everyone! Today on the Plastic Canvas we're painting a Royal Guard from Star Wars Imperial Assault. Hey everyone, Matthew from the Plastic Canvas. So welcome to episode three in this Star Wars Imperial Assault series. Um, and today we're painting the Royal Guard. Now, of doing the Royal Guard fairly early on in the series because he comes out quite a bit in the game. Um, but also being predominantly one color, it's a fairly quick paint, so it'd be pretty quick to get done. Um, but also with, um, you know, sort of the, the folds in the robes and the bit of highlight that'll go on should still get a pretty good effect. So hoping he should should um, should come up looking pretty good. So as you can see, there's a couple of mold lines to take care of um, around the edge of the base and along the top of the base. Um, and then also just sort of around the, um, yeah, over the shoulder and that. So yeah, just took care of them. Um, and then I did a Xenothal Prime. So first hit the whole mini with black. Um, and then used grey from a fairly high angle and then white from directly above. Um, and then I took a couple of pictures and I'll use that as a reference for when I do my highlighting and shading, just to make sure that I get the deeper shadows in the right spot and the brightest highlights in the right spot as well. Now when I was first thinking about the red that I was going to use for the robes, I first went towards a brighter red than this. Um, just because I wanted it to be quite vibrant, but then when I was thinking about the shading and the highlighting, I thought it would be a better idea to start with more of a mid-tone red rather than a brighter one, because I want to really build that contrast with the highlights. I thought it would be easier to build the contrast if I started with a darker red than what I was initially thinking of, because if I started with a brighter one, and I didn't have as far to go with the highlights to build the contrast than what I did if I started a little bit darker. So I've gone with Heraldic Red here, which is um, in my range of reds that I've got. I've got about five or six reds, something like that. Um, it sits pretty well in the middle. So when I do my shading, I've got a very, very dark red that I use, um, and that um, really, really adds some depth to the, um, the folds in the clothes. But then I go up to um, a much brighter red than Heraldic, um, and I actually end up mixing in a little bit of orange to brighten it off even more for that last stage of the highlights, and it gets a really, really good, um, good bit of contrast. So um, yeah, that was that that was a, a thing that was um, quite beneficial to think of early on, um, just about yeah whether that tone that I was starting with was going to make it easier or harder to feel that contrast. So yeah, I went for a bit of a darker one than what I was originally thinking, just to, to make building that contrast down the track a lot easier. Now, as you can see, this is about what coat number three or so on the robe. Um, ideally, I'd probably just do a straight white prime. The red would go over that better than the, the black and the grey. Um, but because of the amount of folds that are in the robe, I wanted to make sure that I really picked out the highlights and the shades correctly, which is why I went with the Xenothal Prime. Um, I could have taken pictures and then gone back with another prime and just hit it with white, um, but I left it. But yeah, ideally white. But um, yeah, the the Xenothal really helped with, with picking out where the shade needed to, needed to be.
one thing I've mentioned in a couple of the recent videos that have gone up is the way that I think washers um, really get overused. Um, they seem to be too much of just uh, an automatic thing that you do. So I, oh, I've base coated, I better do a wash over the whole mini. Now, washers have their place. Um, if you've got, um, you know, like a, a textured surface or, um, you know, recesses in the mini that are quite close to each other, um, washers are fantastic for, for doing that. Um, so it might be like hair or chain mail or something like that. Really helps to bring out the, the details, falls into the recesses absolutely perfect for that. What I found that washers are not great for though is if you have gradual folds in a mini just like in the robes here because what a wash will do is it just it falls into the recesses and really pulls in the bottom of the recess because of gravity um, and you don't get much um, graduation of colors or much blending. You get a really really um, dark colour right at the bottom of the recess um, and then very little anywhere else and then so when you go to highlight it makes it quite difficult to actually smooth out that transition because you're going from very very dark right in the bottom of the recess to not <laughs> very very dark very very quickly um, and I am absolutely a person that is guilty for just overusing washes so what I um, wanted to do here was just with a darker red, I think it's um, clotted red, bloodstained blood red, can't remember which one, um, I did put it up earlier, um, just I really really thinned it down, it's very very thin, um, and you can see I did a little test on my nail there, and now I'm just working my right way around and just filling in where those shades would be, and because the paint is so thin, it's every layer only makes a little bit of a difference to the colours. And you can see, um, you know, as I keep working around, I add more and more and more layers, but each layer is covering a little bit less. So every layer is hitting the very deepest part of the recess, and then I'm just feathering out that edge less and less and less to get that gradual um, transition from the deepest part of the shadow up to the base coat, which is at the top of the fold. And then when I come back with the highlights, um, I don't thin the highlights down as much, but it really, really helps with building up that transition because I'm not going from a super, super dark colour in the bottom of the recess and then that um, lightens off very, very quickly. Um, and yeah, it just really, really helps with um, yeah, having smooth blends and just having that natural sort of yeah, transition from the lighter tones to the darker ones because if you look at your clothes where all those folds are you don't have defined lines between the shades and the highlights it's quite gradual and that's what I wanted to do so I think here is a perfect spot for where washes um, for me um, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not I don't use washes in this case anymore um, but for hair chain mail absolutely but yeah I'm really trying to move away from just base coat wash highlight to now base coat and then look at what's what's going to be the right way to do it because washes have um, they're fantastic like anything they're fantastic when used in the right place in the right way and I don't think this is the right place for it because the, the folds are too gentle and gradual um, it, the, um, you don't want to get that gentle and gradual gradient of colors but building the layers up slowly Thin paints, you can you can get that.
All right, so we're just up to the last couple of steps here to finish off the Royal Guard. So just finishing off the base there, and then I'm just gonna do a black rim around the edge um, because within the game, um, the Royal Guards come out in units of two. Um, and so this guy and one other will get black around the edge. And then the other two that are in the game will get a different color, maybe like gray or blue or something like that, just so that when attacking them, we know um, like which is from which unit. And then I'm just going to do a gloss varnish on the helmet just to make it look like it's harder than the, than the ropes. I did a matte varnish outside with a spray, but I don't have any footage of that because I don't have anything set up to, to film that. So thank you very, very much for spending some time watching me paint another mini. I hope you've enjoyed it um, and gotten something out of it. Please do leave a comment down below, something that you like about the video, something that you think can be improved, and either like and subscribe to keep up to date with these videos as they keep coming out. And please do drop by and finish, um, sorry, and visit the Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram accounts that I have set up for this channel. So with all of that, um, this is Matt from The Plastic Canvas signing out. Happy painting, everyone. Cheers.